this video we are going to discuss how to create a thread in Java so in the previous tutorial we have already covered how to uh, we have already covered multi-threaded programming in Java and we have already seen a lot of concepts like thread priorities uh, we have all discussed all of them and now it's time that we start implementing multi-threaded programming in Java so in this tutorial we are going to create a thread in Java using a runnable interface so before starting this tutorial I will I will just recommend you to just uh, go through the previous video which is the multi-threaded programming I will give the link to the same in the description below all right so before uh, so let's start with the uh, implementation so before starting with the implementation I would just like to show you what we are going to actually do in this tutorial so we are going to uh, do a multitasking a multitasking and basically in this program what we're going to do is so let's suppose this is our Java program so let's suppose this is our Java program what we're going to do is we're going to create two threads let's say this is thread 1 and we're going to create another thread which is thread 2 so we know that these two threads um, basically can run simultaneously so they can perform operations simultaneously so what we're going to do is we're going to create these two threads and we will define what both of them will implement and they will implement at the same time simultaneously so now let's start by implementing the thread so the first important thing that I want to say here is that we're going to create a thread using a runnable interface. Runnable interface. And uh, you should know what exactly is interfaces in Java. And if you don't have any idea about that, I will, I've also created a video on this, on interfaces in Java. So you can also check that out. I will give the description, uh, the link in the description. So let's start by creating our first thread program so what I'm just going to do here is I will create a class and I will name it as thread1 and this class is basically going to implement the runnable interface and the runnable interface is basically used to uh, you can see here this interface should be implemented by a class and it actually enables you to create a thread and execute a thread all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a, a reference to thread class reference to thread class now I'm going to create a uh, I'm going to create a constructor here a very simple constructor so uh, whenever we will create an instance of this class thread one it will it will call this constructor and inside the constructor what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to create I'm going to create an object of the thread class and basically we are going we are using this thread class which is an inbuilt class and it is used to create threads and it expects two arguments one is the reference which is this and second is the name of the thread you can actually provide the name of the thread so let's say this is thread 2 or I should write t2 so uh, now uh, you can see here that this is a very simple line we are creating an object of the thread class by passing two arguments one is the reference and another one is the name of the thread all right so now we will we will display the thread which is running by using our same old print ln command and here i'm just going to specify the thread 
which is currently running and the thread which is running is t all right so now it's time that we start our thread for that we're going to use the start function so start function is basically it causes the thread to begin execution so uh, whenever we want to start the execution of a thread in a program we will call this start function so remember that since runnable is an interface and it has uh, it's basically a functional interface it has a uh, it has a abstract method which is the run method so you can see here um, here you can see if you will hover at this class it will show that the type thread one must implement the inherited abstract method runnable dot run so run function is actually the abstract method inside the interface that we need to override so we will have to override because we will have to implement it since this thread one class is implementing the runnable interface so i will click here add an implemented methods and it will quickly uh, uh, it will quickly create a run function here so what i'm going to do here simply is inside a run function i will create a for loop and this for loop is basically used to display let's say first five first five natural numbers so this program will actually display the first five natural numbers i'm going to write system dot out print line command and we're going to display i here so you can see that this for loop is going to run but now the, what we're going to do is we're going to display every value after some uh, duration so uh, we can actually use a thread dot sleep function and basically sleep function is used uh, it's uh, just stops the execution or you can say it sleeps the uh, execution of a thread for some time and you will have to uh, give the time inside this parameter and it is basically in milliseconds so if i will write here thousand it means that it is one second and similarly so you can see here the thread will sleep here now if you will hover here you will be able to see that it says that unhandled exception type interrupted exception so one important thing to note here is that a thread can also get interrupted due to some reason like maybe the thread is not able to get proper cpu resources or something like that so in any case we are going to use a try catch block and we will catch this interrupted interrupted exception So whenever our thread will get interrupted, we will just print that out here. We will write here thread interrupted. All right. So now we have seen how to uh, implement a thread, but this is just a single thread. And what this thread is going to do here is uh, after every one second or let me just increase the time to two seconds so I will also comment here sleeps for two seconds so whenever this thread will sleep for two seconds after every two seconds it will display the uh, number I so uh, let me just run this program to show you the output so let me first resolve this error here all right so uh, there was a curly bracket was missing here so that's why it was showing the error so let me just run this program and now you can see in the output screen here 
that after every two seconds it will display the next number it will take two seconds and then next and then five and then it will terminate you can see it has terminated now so after two seconds it will display the number so now what we're going to do is uh, let's just increase this time to three and now it will take three seconds and after every three seconds it is going to call the run function uh, it will sleep and it will then call the run function again and now what we're going to do is we're going to create another thread and this time we will call this thread as thread2 and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this thread1 and I'm going to paste it here and I'm just going to rename it to thread2 the constructor should be thread2 this should be t1 and here what I'm just going to do here is I will write 7 and let's write any random number let's write 14 here so this program will let's change the time to one second so after every one second after every one second this run function will be called and this is basically inside the thread too so in this program what we have done is we have created two threads thread one and thread two one thread will execute this section after every three seconds and the another thread will execute this this whole uh, code after every one second so you can see that we have implemented multitasking this is the same program but these two are different tasks that are running so two different codes are running at two different times so uh, let's see what will happen if we will run this program uh, so when we will run this program it will first create thread one so it will display uh, one and then it will wait for three seconds and meanwhile this thread which is the thread 2 will display the number 7 8 and 9 after every one second and when it will display 9 it has already been 3 seconds so then it will display another number which is 2 and it will go on like this so let's run this program and see the execution so here you can see it displayed 1 and then it waited for 3 seconds alright so no, now the program has been terminated so let's see this output here and let's analyze the output and then we will be able to understand the multitasking so first the thread which will run is our t1 and then t2 thread will run when the thread 1 runs it will display 1 which you can see here in this code this run function will uh, start execution and it will display 1 and then it will wait for 3 seconds so meanwhile we have called thread 2 and thread 2 will display this code it will execute this code so it will display 7 and then it will dis wait for one second and after one second it's, it will display eight and after another one second it will display nine so now you can see that this is actually thread two and after three seconds the thread one will execute so after one it will display two then again it will wait for three seconds so three times this code will run and then it will display uh, then the thread one will again display this code which is three and then after three seconds it will display all of the results so you can uh, run this program by yourself and i will also provide this program inside the android application which you can download uh, i have given the link to the in the description below and please make sure to subscribe our channel and like this video and also share it with your friends so that uh, we will get some more support to make these interesting videos now uh, we have implemented a thread we have seen how we can create two threads and 
uh, we can execute both the threads at the same time by changing the number so uh, basically changing the time using the thread dot sleep function so we are also going to discuss some in more tutorials we will discuss uh, a lot important topics like deadlocks synchronization etc and basically um, in this uh, example we have seen we will also discuss about a lot important concepts like deadlocks in the further coming tutorials and synchronization so in this program you can see that both these threads the thread 1 and thread 2 are independent and this means that uh, the thread uh, any of the threads does not depend on the output from uh, the another thread so uh, the thread 1 is independently running on itself and thread 2 is independently running on itself they do not depend on each other or they do not depend on the output that is coming from them so in that case uh, we don't have any problems but there are cases when we are doing multitasking and when we are doing multitasking the, then we um, then there are cases when some thread might depend on an output it might depend on the output that is coming from some other thread let's say t2 in that cases some deadlocks may occur and we will have to do some synchronization work and that's what we're going to see in the upcoming tutorial so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching